All right. Is it working now? I hope it's working. So that was weird. The first stream just kind of crashed. I said it had lost connection to my streaming software. It said that it wasn't doing anything. I don't know what it was. No idea if anyone's going to show up to this one. Don't know if anyone will be here. But uh, eh, we'll see. I like to stream. If people show up, they show up. If they don't, they don't. I'll just talk for an hour or so regardless. Anywho, what was I saying? Oh, yes. So it's been a very exciting time for me. I'm quite exhausted. Last two days, I've spent like 21 hours and 38 minutes. I like to time how much time I spend composing. But I spent all that time in the past two days working on music, rewrites, re-edits, um, um, fixing dialogue that was recorded for characters who are off stage, doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, Pavel, welcome, welcome. It's working nice now. Can you please check your email stream? Yes, I was about to say something. Pavel, I recognize your name. You sent me an email about lessons. I apologize for not responding sooner. I have been ridiculously busy. Uh, the soundtrack for the play, the play that I'm writing soundtrack for is debuting tomorrow. And so I have been ridiculous busy. I have gotten 10 hours of sleep in the past 48 hours. Uh, and yeah, all in all, all kinds of craziness going on. So I apologize for not responding already, Pavel, but I will, and I, I apologize if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but I will be reaching out uh, this weekend. Sorry. Um, things are just crazy, crazy, crazy. All right. Uh, but yeah, so today, as the title says, today we're going to do a crash course on emotions in music because that's one of my favorite things to talk about. Uh, it really is. I love psychology, I love music, I love storytelling, and so emotions and music is just a wonderful thing to do about that, uh, to kind of combine all of it together. Um, and I happen to have a class about emotions and music, and I, th I like to think it's a good class. I like to think that I'm talented at teaching, and that I have a way of kind of sharing my thoughts and processes. Um, but yes, um, awesome. So yeah, let's kind of get started, emotions and music. And as usual, if anybody right now it's just the uh, right now it's just the two of us. Welcome, Pavel. Uh, again, um, just two of us. So any questions, any ideas, thoughts, theories, questions, throw them on out there. All right, I'm always happy to do it. Um, but all right, so emotions and music. Uh, Alistair, welcome, welcome. We're getting more people. Hopefully, more and more people are gonna find out that I had to switch streams for some reason. But uh, yes, where was I? Emotions and music, yes, in my sleep-deprived state. Let's see what I can teach everybody. So, usually, I get a lot of comments. I get a lot of comments, I get a lot of messages on Instagram, I get a lot of emails asking about specific emotions. All right, people have been asking this ever since I started a YouTube channel. Well, not ever since I started a YouTube channel, but ever since people started discovering my YouTube channel. Um, because this is one of the most kind of in-demand topics when it comes to composing music. Everyone comes, no one decides to write music, or I should say, shouldn't say no one, but most people don't start writing music because they want an academic challenge. I would argue that no one sits there thinking, I'm bored, I'm so intelligent, how do I exercise my brain? Oh, let's write some complicated music. No, people want to write music because they are moved by music. Because they watched a movie, or they played a video game, or they heard a song in an anime or a TV show, or just music anywhere, and it impacted them, all right? And they felt something, and they loved it, and they wanted to know, how can I make music that does this? Um, some kind of things that kind of impacted me and the way I love to listen to music is the soundtrack from the video game Life is Strange. Never played the game before, but all of my friends have, and I've kind of watched them play the game, and the soundtrack is incredible. Likewise, Studio Ghibli. I have seen almost all the Studio Ghibli movies. I love them, and the music in those movies is incredible. And for me, it's the emotion, the nostalgia, the ambiguity that makes this music beautiful. So all of this is just kind of rambling to say, emotions in music is a very popular topic. Um, but lots of people approach it the wrong way. Too many people try to approach emotions in music with a music first lens. All right, so this is typically kind of like the template lens, all right, which are useful. I'm not gonna dump on templates saying they're useless. I've shared a lot of templates myself. But the idea of a template is people think, if I wanna make happy music, I need to write 
happy music. How do I write happy music? All right, they want to know what harmony do I use? What textures do I do? What rhythms do I use? What instruments do I use? They want to know all these little template ideas. When, you might get annoyed by this, because uh, maybe I'm just splitting hairs a bit too much, but the better approach is to take an emotions first approach. All right, and I use the word approach twice in one sentence, but it's okay, I'm sleep deprived. Um, I don't need to be eloquent. Um, but the idea is, and this is something that I repeat a lot on my channel, is if you want to portray something in music, you need to start by describing the thing you want to describe. And I'll write this down, actually. Start by describing the emotions you want to portray. What is it like to experience them? All right, so... This is the same with characters. This is the same with story worlds, themes, ideas. If you want to write music that captures a character, a good place to start is to study the character. What world are they from? What social class are they from? What culture do they belong to? Uh, what kind of story do they undertake? What role do they play in the story? Are they the villain? Are they the hero? Are they the supporting character who steals the hearts of the audience? You want to start by describing the character, their motivations, everything that you can, because they are going to reveal the way your music should sound. The things you know about your character should reveal what you should do with your music. Um, and we see this all the time um, in kind of like Celtic fantasy type movies. You're going to hear a lot of Celtic flute. In a lot of space odyssey movies, you're going to hear those grandiose synths. There's all kinds of really cool sounds that you're going to hear that are inspired by the characters in the story worlds. And the same approach should be taken with your emotions. You want to think, instead, this is a happy scene, let's write some generic happy music. You want to go a little bit deeper and try to describe the type of happiness. Try to describe the type of sadness, the anger. What kind of emotion are you trying to experience? Now, all of this is nice and kind of flowery, it's theory, but how do we actually apply all of this? All right, so how do you actually describe emotions? Now, there's a lot of theories about this. There's a whole lot of different strategies and tools you can approach. I cover many of them in my class. But the most useful one is using something called the CMA, or the Circumplex Model of Effect. I've talked about this a couple times on the channel already, but this is essentially an old psychological tool it's not quite popular anymore in terms of therapy or anything, but it's perfect for us because it claims, tool that claims all emotions can be described as a combination of valence plus intensity. All right, so what are these words? All right, so valence equals how positive slash negative the emotional experience is. Intensity is, obviously, how intensely the emotion is experienced. All right, so, for example, for valence, sadness is pretty easy, all right? It's a negative emotion, all right? It's a dark emotion. Whereas the intensity, you've got to think about how you express sadness. Um, when you're sad, you kind of, so like sadness and anger, they're both dark negative emotions but the difference comes from their intensity sadness when you're sad you gotta think about your body language you kind of slump in your chair you don't want to get out of bed you just kind of shuffle your feet you have low energy it's a non-intense experience whereas anger while it is also a negative emotion is much more intense you might kick a chair you want to lash out you want to react you want to do something so it's a very highly intense very high energy experience so if you can describe your emotion based off how negative it is and how intense the energy is, you can use the same uh, description for your music. For example, valence in music equals how dark slash bright the music sounds. And intensity equals how much energy your music contains. All right, so this is pretty simple. 
All right, but there's a whole lot of different strategies we can apply for this. Basically, you think about the kind of emotion you want to portray, and you got to think how dark or bright is this, all right? And you can use different strategies for manipulating the brightness and darkness. Um, for example, let's say strategies for creating a dark sound in your music. Also, I've mentioned this multiple times today already, but I'm running on two consecutive nights of less than five hours of sleep, so I'm kind of in a feverish kind of state at the moment. So I'm not entirely lucid about everything I'm teaching, so if anything doesn't make sense, please let me know, all right? Um, shoot some comments below, any questions, any ideas, let me know, as usual. Um, um, yeah, strategies for creating a dark sound in your music. You can use minor harmony. You can use low voicings. Lots of low registers. You can use heavier instruments. Things like brass or low strings kind of stuff. Um, strategies for creating a bright sound in your music. Um, the should things, major harmonies. Uh, brighter sound, uh, uh, higher voicings. Open voicings, lots of upper registers, lots of lighter instruments, things like the flute, things like the upper clarinet, violins, etc. It's the more you write, the more kind of intuitive this stuff will become in terms of what makes a dark sound and what makes a bright sound. So in harmony, it's pretty simple. in a minor key you get a major you get a dark sound right in a major key you get a brighter sound kind of thing where most people tend to get confused is more about manipulating energy in your music so there are two fundamental strategies for manipulating energy in your music. All right? You can increase slash decrease the size of your music, and you can increase slash decrease the amount of movement in your music. All right, so if you wanna make something lower energy, make it smaller, an intimate piano perhaps. If you wanna make it bigger, make it massive, a huge orchestral arrangement. Um, the, you can do the number of octaves you're spanning, the um, number of layers you're using in your orchestration. Anytime you get bigger with your music, the energy goes up. Anytime you get smaller, the energy goes down. Um, and uh, anytime you increase or decrease movement, so like faster tempos, uh, faster subdivisions, um, all kinds of cool stuff. And I am exhausted, my good friends. I am sorry. Uh, at this point, I feel like I'm rambling. All right, why don't we just kind of write something, all right? I'm not sure if there's anyone left on this stream. Uh, but oh well, push forward. Let's, what should we do? Let's write, let's compose an emotion, shall we? Let's capture an emotion with the music. Um, let's start with just something in a minor key. All right, let's kind of go with, you know what? No, I've already done sad and tragic, the kind of impacts we can do on that. So let's try doing, oh, welcome, Pavel. Or not, I've said welcome, but awesome. Good to see you're still here. Uh, let's see here, wonderful. So yeah, what do you think? I think it's just you and me at the moment. Um, let's, so I've basically described all the theory here, all right? That was a fever, feverish kind of run through of the theory of emotions in music, all right? If you wanna portray an emotion in music, start with your description. How dark or bright is that emotion? How negative or positive is it? And how much energy is it experienced? Think about playing, experiencing that emotion itself. How does your body portray the emotion? Is it like sadness where you're kind of slumped in a chair? Is it like anger where you wanna lash out and kick? That's lots of energy. Is it like being content where also you're just happy sitting and existing? Or is it excitement where you're like rubbing your hands together, you're shaking, you wanna jump, you wanna dance, you wanna celebrate because you're excited? In fact, let's do that, shall we? Let's compose 
some simple happy music. Simple but happy music. All right, so this is going to be, uh, if you think about being simple and happy, how positive or negative that is, it's pretty positive. I like being happy. It's fun. Um, energy, we'll say about medium. All right, there's nothing too crazy going on. So first, let's focus on creating a positive, bright sound for our music. For me, I'd say that's working with a major key. So we've got C major, and if you've been on here for any period of time, you understand my personal approach to music and writing chord progressions. I start with the tonic, oops, sorry. Then I skip ahead and form my tonic, or my cadence. So let's do, let's do an, uh, a deceptive cadence. So I've got the start of my chord progression, I've got the end, let's fill it in following the strong weak pattern. So I've got strong chord, the tonic, let's do a subdominant functioning chord because that's a weak chord. Then we'll do another tonic functioning chord. Um, let's jump up to a dominant so it's not just a constant uh, pattern of moving up my thirds. Then we'll jump down to there. Then we'll do another, we'll do A minor. And now we've got our chord progression. All right, C major, D minor, E, ma e minor, G major, D minor, G major, A minor. In fact, actually listening to that, I'm going to make a couple changes. I'm gonna take that D minor, turn it into an F major so that we have more major chords. So now in the first half, I've got two major chords, a minor and a major, so that's much happier. Then in the second half, I've got D minor, A minor, G major, A minor. Um, so yeah, let's change this around again. Let's do C major. And then yeah, we can leave the D minor. So let's listen to our chord progression, shall we? Deceptive cadence. Let's just end it there. Um, awesome. Looks like we're getting some more people to show up. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Um, if you missed it, the beginning part of this video was just about the theory of emotions and music. Um, fun stuff, cool stuff. I'm a nerd about that stuff. I love it. So, uh, um, and now we're just kind of applying all of it. So we just said that emotions. You start with the description of the emotion. All right. So, for example, happiness. How can we describe a simple content afternoon? All right, well, we can describe it across valence and energy. By valence, I mean how positive is it? How positive, negative, bright, dark, however you want to describe it. And you think of it on a scale, how bright, how positive is your emotion? And then however positive that is, you want to, uh, 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 sorry, you want to portray that with your music. So happiness, content, it's a pretty positive emotion. So we want some pretty bright music, uh, for example, nice major key harmony and then contentment that's pretty low energy if you think about how you feel when you're content you're just kind of sitting there you're just kind of happy maybe you're going for a walk the idea is like you're not spurred to action the idea of contentment and happiness is you're just happy to exist kind of thing you're happy to be where you are um and so we want to portray that with our music with relatively like not low but not high energy so for example Let's change, whoa, 135. What was I writing on here that was 135? Um, let's go about 110. That's more of a moderate energy level. Let's see here. Then we'll fill up the bass line. C, F, E, G. And then it was D, C, G, C. So let's lower down that. And now we've got our harmony. up and then we've got some better voice leading um 
Awesome. No cord extensions. Uh, yes. Welcome, Andrew. Yes, cord extensions. We could do that. Normally, I love working with cord extensions. Uh, a lot of my recent soundtrack, which I'll be uploading later tonight, um, uh, at least on SoundCloud. I've got to start sharing music on SoundCloud, so i got to start doing that. I'll share. I'll make a post about it on Instagram. I'll make a post about it on Instagram and on YouTube. If you're not following me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. I'll be in New York. I leave tomorrow, and I'll be there all weekend for the debut of the play. So I'll be doing live Q&As on the Instagram stories. Follow me, and yeah, I'll answer your questions and whatnot. Similar to what I'm doing here, just hopefully less dead on my feet. Ah, uh, let's see here. So we've got a chord progression, we've got a nice little happy thing. Let's write a quick melody. And because really what we're gonna see the most out of this approach is how we can transform one theme and its emotional context to another emotional context. So let's write a quick melody. Let's see some, uh, throw some minor six and add nines. It was, I will, in a minute. First, I wanna start with the first theme. Then we can try it around. Cause after this, we're gonna get a nice, simple, happy, low energy theme. And after that, I'm gonna ask what kind of direction you guys wanna take it in. What kind of, what kind of uh, mood you wanna take it in. You wanna make it more nostalgic and ambiguous? In which case, yeah, I could make a, kinds of really cool sounds there's all kinds of really cool sounds that you can make um i love chord extensions they're just more fun to work with if you have no idea what chord extensions are check out my playlist harmony for composers i have a video you'll if, you, if you're not good with harmony you'll want to watch the whole playlist because it's taught like a class one video builds on the next but if you're just curious about chord extensions and extended harmonies and all that cool stuff, check out my video on five plus note chords, I think is what the thumbnail says. But the idea is that all of these chords have just beautiful extensions you can work with. That's a 13, nine, seven, six. All right, the difference between the six and the 13 because the 13 and the 6 are the same thing, are the notes that you find in between. It's cool stuff. I love working with jazz chords. Um, and in fact, have y'all, I, I shared, I had a lot of fun working on this. You know what? No, no, no. I was going to start bringing out some stuff from my soundtrack, but no, no, no. Let's focus on this. All right, because the title says Crash Course on Emotions and Music, and that's what I'm supposed to be doing, right? So, uh, well, we go. Does anyone have any questions about emotions and music? At this point, I'm just kind of going on autopilot. Um, selfless, like, or shameless, I should say, little plug. I have a six week course that I teach exclusively about emotions and music. First week goes much, much more depth into this entire theory, specific tools, specific strategies, specific tips and tricks for applying and manipulating energy and valence and describing your emotions. And then after that, there's a week dedicated to each of what I call the four uh, fundamental emotions. All right, so we've got basically emotions that are high, uh, positive valence and high energy, potion, uh, emotions that are positive valence but low energy, emotions that are negative valence and high energy, and emotions that are negative valence but low energy. They kind of form four quadrants in like kind of a square graph. And then we talk about what happens when you manipulate around that graph and then how you can get more specific with describing the emotions and portraying actual emotions. Six week course, tons of fun. There are weekly lectures that you guys can attend. And if you can't attend, they're all recorded and uploaded to the class. Um, it's a lot of fun. You get feedback on your homework assignments. You get to direct access to me and stuff. It's fun. I enjoy it. So far, we've got a couple people. The next one starts April 6th and seats are going to be filling up. So make sure you check it out. Uh, link is in the description, I believe. If not, you can find it on my website. Uh, I'll get off my soapbox. Probably won't be the last time I get on it. Um, let's see here. So GE, let's form a quick... Uh, let's actually, let's do a quick little melodic idea. And then right, what I'm doing right now is if you'll notice, I'm just taking chordal tones from above, from the chords beneath, 
and I'm just spelling them out to try and create a general shape for the melody. All right, so then we'll do, um, we'll do A, and then we'll do, we'll do our climax right there, and then, Uh, let's do C and then G. All right, so now we're starting to carve out a little bit of a melody. We've got a basic shape. It's going to sound very cheesy. All right, so we've got our basic idea written out, a couple contexts. Um, I'm here. Uh, Andrew, is this usually how you develop a melody? Depends. It depends on how much time I have. So if I have like six months to work on a soundtrack, like I initially did for this play, I'll spend several weeks just working on the melody, carving it, crafting it, making sure my themes work. Um, if I have to very quickly write one, for example, an academic exercise like this, where I have to demonstrate it, then yes, this is the approach I'll usually take. Uh, and even then, when I take the longer ones, I'll usually take a very similar approach, where I'll start harmony first, I'll create a basic shape, and then I'll carve the melody out from here. So what we're gonna find, now that I've got my basic melodic shape filled with target tones, so that's what these are called. Target tones are important notes in the melody. You can recognize a target tone because they're usually the longest notes in a measure, uh, or in a bar. They are usually the on strong beats, so they're emphasized. Um, and they are usually found in the harmony underneath. The first two, kind of maybe. Sometimes they're not the longest, sometimes they're not emphasized. But the third one is almost always a dead giveaway. The target tones, or the most important notes in the melody, are almost always found in the underlying harmony. Because traditionally, the harmony, the melody is what reveals the harmony. All right, I'm kind of taking the opposite of approach. I'm kind of recreating it or reverse engineering it. But yeah, so this is an approach. Uh, Crash, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so today we're covering emotions and music. I started the video by talking about the basic theory. All right. For those of you who have been watching the whole time, I apologize for the quick recap, but the idea of portraying emotions is you have to start by describing the emotions. All right. Usually one of the most effective strategies is to describe them in terms of valence and energy valence, meaning how dark or bright the emotion is, how positive or negative they are. And then energy being in a how intensely they're experienced. So the examples I've been using is sadness is a dark emotion. It's a negative emotion. Doesn't mean it's bad, but it's just a negative experience. Energy wise, it's traditionally pretty low energy. All right. When you're sad, you don't want to act. You don't want to do much. You just kind of want to sit there. You want to mope. You want to cry. You want to whatever. You don't want to do much. On the other hand, Another negative emotion, like anger, it's still negative. It's still dark. It's still kind of on that darker side of the emotional spectrum. But the energy is much higher. When you're angry, you want to lash out. You want to kick stuff. You want to act. You want to do something. And that needs to be represented in your music. Now, there are lots of strategies. So, well, first, I'm getting ahead of myself. Once you can describe your emotion, you can use the same description for your music. So for happiness and contentment, which is what we're doing real quick here, is... It's a positive emotion, right? It's relatively bright, all right? Moving on from there, we can do bright harmonies. For example, uh, we can do uh, oh, like bright harmonies, lots of major chords, major keys, etc. We can focus on higher notes like we are in the melody. Um etc. You can use bright instruments. There's all kinds of cool things you can do to create a brighter sound with your music. On the other side, if we wanted something deeper, something darker, we could just drop it a couple octaves. It becomes richer. Um, if we wanted to make it even more dark, we could make it minor. So there, I just kind of like swapped the qualities of the chords. Um, 
And energy-wise, there are basically two strategies, two overarching strategies, I should say. Because in my class, I go into a lot more detail about, I think, like 12 or 14 specific things you can do to control the energy. But as a crash course and a quick tool, anytime you increase the size and scope of your music, you increase the energy. So you add more instruments, boom, energy went up. You add more octaves, boom, energy went up. You want add more layers, maybe instead of melody, chords, and bass, you have melody, chords, counter melody, ostinato, and bass. Boom, energy went higher. On the other hand, anytime you reduce the scope and size, the energy decreases. So you remove a layer. Now it's just melody and bass line. Boom, energy went down. You reduce the number of instruments, boom, energy went down, et cetera, et cetera. So you can manipulate energy through the size of your music. And on the other hand, you can also manipulate energy through movement. The more movement there is in your music, the energy goes higher. You increase the tempo, boom, energy went up. You increase the number of notes per measure. So maybe instead of quarter notes, you use a bunch of eighth notes. Energy goes up. Move it up again, 16th notes. Energy goes up. Um, you add um, really like anything to add movement, essentially. I'm kind of losing straight. I've, I've mentioned a couple times I'm very tired today. But the idea is that you can manipulate energy and size that way. Uh, to manipulate energy through movement and size. So we can start here. We've started with our description of happiness and contentment. It's positive and relatively low energy. All right, so I'm starting with nothing too small, nothing too big, nothing too fast, nothing too slow, and just focusing on happy harmonies. So let's do a quick rhythmic idea here, shall we? This is going to be our Let's see if this is a good motif. I like this. All right, so That's our motif, all right? I took those two chordal tones, I added some rhythm, and I just added movement. All right, so my target tones still exist. G and E, they're both still on the target beats and they still belong to the chord underneath it. The rest are called approach tones. You could make an argument about this being a target, depends on who you're asking. But the idea is, I don't need to maintain the exact shape I originally had. These notes, these target tones, or target tones that I've added, just help add a framework. So now I've got this nice, lovely, cheesy little motif. And so now for the structure, I'll use something called sentence structure, which some people know as prebait. Start with your motif, repeat the motif with a little bit of variation if needed, then do a new motif, and then just add your cadence. So we have my first motivic idea. Now we're going to repeat the motivic idea by first finding the same rhythmic idea. All right, let's go up here. Let's go up a bit, shall we? G, B. Um, F would be tricky. Let's see how this sounds. F doesn't work, so maybe if we drop, bring it up to an A, let's listen to the whole thing. Um, let's try the A. Maybe if we do the F down here. Let's do an F sharp, shall we? Have some fun. Awesome. Go a little chromatic. So what I've done here, um, oh, well, let's see here. Um, uh, sorry, I'm, I haven't been paying attention to the comments. Sorry, I'm a little bit, wait, no worries, Crash, welcome back. Or what we've already done, we talked about that. Crash, how would you do something in between, like something mysterious? Awesome, great question, fantastic question even. Um, again, you start with the description. All right, so how would you describe mystery? All right, so there's something you don't quite understand. All right, there's something missing. All right, there's a question that you can't answer. All right, so there's going to be movement. All right, with a mystery, there's going to be movement. All right, you want to find the solution. Um, I'd say it depends on the kind of mystery. It might be darker, might be brighter. 
But you just, that's the whole point, is you start with describing it. Um, usually, for mystery, there's going to be context from a story that you're trying to tell. So then you want to think about the nature of the mystery itself. All right, Start thinking about what characters are involved. What are the stakes involved with the mystery? If they don't figure it out, what happens? Uh, so is this high stakes? Is it low stakes? Is it the kind of thing like your friend is leaving the house and you don't know where they're going? It's a mystery. But your birthday is next week, so they're probably just out getting ingredients for a cake or whatever. Or is it the kind of mystery where you've got the evil landlord or someone is conniving to kind of take your security deposit or something? I don't know. Um, you got to think about the stakes and what the person has to gain or lose. Then you want to think about the characters themselves. What kind of portrayal are you trying to do? What kind of emotional toll do they have involved with this? Um, so technically, mysterious is not an emotion. And that's a good point. Lots of people, when they say they want to portray emotions, they're not considering emotions so much as storytelling things, different events. For example, a very common question is, how do people portray funny? Well, funny is not an emotion. All right, funny is an adjective. So if you're trying to portray an adjective or a noun or something that's not quite an emotion per se, you want to think about what emotion are you trying to convey? All right, what emotion are you trying to convey? So for the mystery, if it's a high stakes, maybe you want to portray a bit of danger. All right, but you can't reveal the danger. So it's got to be like a little lower energy danger. Or maybe it's a mystery and you want to be an excitement. Like what is your birthday gift going to be this year kind of thing. So you want to think about the emotion you're trying to convey to your audience, the emotion you want your audience to experience as they go through this mystery. And that's what you got to try and play. Does that make sense? I don't know. I'm kind of half lucid here, people. I'm exhausted. Um, but yeah, hopefully. Uh, Julia Angel or CD number 67. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're getting more people here. All right, so we are working on a very cheesy little melodic idea. We're making a happy, content idea. chromatic flavor in that i like that um and f sharp uh brownie points to anybody who can tell me in the key of c major uh which mode are we borrowing f sharp from which parallel mode i should say um and then so we've got so again i'm following uh sentence structure so that is present my motivic idea repeat my motivic idea with a little bit of change now, these next two measures, I'm going to introduce a new mode. Andrew Dole, excellent, yes, correct, C Lydian. So the C Lydian sound is C major, but with a raised F. So this is C major. This would be C Lydian. All right, I kind of slow down and emphasize the F sharp. It's the raised fourth scale degree, and that gives us a very traditional positive kind of happy sound um so that's a very kind of simple high energy heroic kind of thing so i've established my motif i've repeated my motif with a little bit of variation now let's do a contrasting idea let's just do one of these all right Let's just do, let's do a little less movement. Let's do one of these. We'll bring this one down. That's a C major, so let's leave the C. Let's listen to how it all sounds together. So th this next motif works, and then our cadence is kind of written for us. The last two measures in sentence structure, so it's prevade, present a motif, two bars long. Repeat your motif for another two bars. Make some changes if you want to, but make sure the original idea is still there. Thir next two measures, so measures uh, five and six, make sure that you introduce a new idea, all right? Something to add a bit of contrast. And then the last two measures are the cadence. Just end it. They don't need to be interesting. They don't need to be clever. They don't need to much. All you need to do is find what note you want to end on 
and find a creative or simple way to just end it. And so now we have a cheesy, simple, but rapidly written melody that kind of takes the idea of content and happy. Actually, let's do, let's do one of these, shall we? Kind of overlaps with the harmony, but that's okay for now. It's just an academic exercise. Um, Andrew Doodle, shouldn't the melody breathe a little bit? Oh, definitely. This is very much just a cheesy melody in and of itself. Um, if you want content, yeah, you could definitely breathe it a little bit. Add a little bit of movement, so... But yeah, this is very much a very cheesy, very simple melody. I wrote it very rapidly. If I had the time, I would say, yeah, let's make it more unique. Let's make it more colorful, more creative. And I think I've actually done a live stream on that, haven't I? Where I talked about strategies for making uh, melodies a little more interesting, a little more creative, a little more lively, a little more expressive so we can do one of these things because i'm a terrible piano player um let's drop these actually it's not quite proper voice leading but it'll work let's do all of these with a little bit of variability to the velocity just make it sound a little less robotic and then for the melody I don't think we have any repeating notes. Awesome, except for right there, so I'll have to make sure I check that. I am just going to move things ever so slightly. I will break the legato on this one, and there we go. Now we have a slightly more human performance. But yeah, we've got our idea, so now the question is, we have now portrayed a simple, happy, kind of content energy. All right, so let's describe this real quick so we can have an understanding of what we're about to do to this little theme. All right, so let's see here. I'm gonna delete all my notes here. I've, I've kind of broken down the theory for emotions and music a couple times, but content and happy. How would we describe this? Valence equals bright, it's a happy, a positive emotion. Energy equals moderate. We're not dragging our... So uh, so energy being moderate, let's say, we're not bursting with energy. Energy, but we're not comatose either. And yes, that's not how you spell comatose. I don't know how you spell comatose. I'm a musician, not a spelling bee champion. I apologize. Um, but yes, so, uh, yeah, so this is what we got content and happy. So now the question is, what happens if we change the valence or the energy? So for what happens, for example, if we make the valence equals neutral bright and energy equals moderate. So same description for energy. So we're not going to change the energy, but we're going to change the valence. All right, so one of the quickest strategies to do this is to just make, add some extensions, chord extensions. If, let's actually copy and paste this. So what happens if I take my melody and I just make extended chords? All right, so we'll say C major seven, F, uh, F major seven, so we've got We'll do E minor seven. There's gonna be another D, and then we'll leave. I don't know. We can probably do G major six because a G dominant seven would have too much energy, too too harsh of a sound. We're wanting to go to, to the one. So what if we just do uh, one of these? And all I'm doing is I'm kind of confusing the harmony a little. By confusing, I'll explain in a little bit, I'm not using simple 
what I should say is I'm not using simple triads. All right, and then we'll end on a major sixth. All right, so simple triads, like C major, have very easy, simple to understand understanding. Major triads sound happy, whereas minor triads sound dark. All right, problem here is we've got C major, but we also have all of the notes for E minor. So we've got two conflicting messages here. Is this a happy chord or is it a dark chord? And when we combine them into one chord, we get a much more ambiguous and happy sounding nostalgic chord. Actually, now that I mention this, my last video was about this, all right? So if you watched my last video about how to write nostalgic sounding music, I've already explained all of this theory, all right? So the idea of how all of this works and just changing the chords, we're gonna get a different sound. A little crunchy here and there, so we can still adjust this further. So what happens, for example, if C, G, B, what if we start and we emphasize the B. What if we just move this entire thing up? So we start on B, we go down to C, let's see how this sounds. Let's mute this. I don't know how I like that. I don't know how I like that at all actually. So what if we just try removing some of the confusion? Let's remove the G. And then we've got F major seven. So the fifth and F major seven is C. We'll remove the fifths from each of these. E minor goes E, G, B. B is the minor. And we've got the sixth. Uh, G will remove the D as well, because that's the fifth. And so now we're just kind of cleaning it up a little bit. This is a very simple, annoying little harmony, but it works. We'll continue to mute the fifths. And then, oh, why did that not mute? And then, yeah. So we've got this. It's not really voice led at all, but that's okay. Uh, we'll listen to both of them right in a row. We haven't changed anything in the melody, just a simple change in the harmony and it gets a different mood. Not a dramatic change, but, uh, it's a change what's, uh, in and of itself. Simple, cheesy, kindergarten grade kind of happy piece. Then we get a little more interesting with our harmonies and the mood changes. It's very subtle. In fact, I'm going to lower the bass a little bit. Just because the perfectionist in me is getting annoyed with all of this stuff. Um, we've lowered the energy slightly by reducing the velocity, but that's okay. It's not a dramatic impact. It's a subtle change, and if I had more time, it's almost four as it is. Um, I would do a lot more impact on it, but as you can see, neutral bright, we've made it a little bit more neutral by confusing the harmony a little bit, energy stayed the same, so we could say, what is this, um, somewhat nostalgic, I don't know, um, something similar, but you can see by just changing the valence, we've changed the overall mood or vibe, so let's do something a little more dramatic though. Uh, let's say, yeah, let's just go for excitement. All right, so the valence is bright. All right, so it's the same thing from up here, all right? Um, just put that, it's a positive motion. So what happens equals high. So something we could do here is just add a little bit more movement into our chord progression, right? All right, uh, let's see here, any questions? Uh, what piano is that? Lab salt piano? I have no idea. What piano is this? 
Uh, probably the Grand Year by, uh, no, it's the Gentleman. The Gentleman by Native Instruments. It's an upright piano. I typically use the Gentleman or the Giant or the Grand Year. As you can see, in case, if you've been here a while, you've noticed I've got a lot more sound libraries now. It's because I finally got another hard drive. So I no longer have only 30 gigabytes left in my hard drive. I now have a couple more terabytes. Thank goodness. Um, yeah, Captures, yes, you do see Lydian. Ah, uh, the F sharp. Where is it? Right here. Yep, and a little bit of chromatic flavor. I like it. Um, but uh, where were we? Yeah, we're going to make this a little more exciting. Uh, let's highlight. And so, again, we're taking the same exact idea, and we're just manipulating the energy this time. So this one, we took the same idea, we manipulated the valence a little bit, made it a bit more of a neutral harmony, and it changed the mood a little bit. Here we're going to change the energy, and it's going to have a much more dramatic uh, kind of experience to it. All right, um, let's see. All right, let's just do one of those, all right? Yeah, let's do one of these. We're just gonna add a bit of a... Let's do a 16th note, let's make it a bit faster. And what we're gonna do is we're adding movement here, because remember what I said, when you add movement, you increase the energy. All right, something else we can do. Let's bring these over here. Oh, well, kind of just copy and paste. Nope, that was a bit much. So we'll just leave the eighth notes. And we'll increase the tempo is what we'll do. Let's create a tempo track. Let's see here. Add a stop there, and then here we'll just say, let's just do 135, shall we? A nice fast paced. And then we will take all of these and make them shorter. We'll do the same thing here. That's just this. In fact, let's actually, since that's a very similar chord, all I'm doing is I'm adding more movement, right? I'm adding more movement, I'm adding uh, shorter articulations, a faster tempo. And so what all of this is going to result in is a very different kind of mood for the music. And now let's bring this down because it is an E minor. And then this was G major. Curses, why did I not just repeat the chord progression? That would have made this faster. Oh well. Uh, let's see, Andrew, I'm thinking that approaching, let me see this here, what do you say? I think that approaching music from describing the emotion and translating them into music is definitely useful, but I usually just use it as a springboard and let the music guide me efforts. Oh, definitely. Um, if everybody's got their own process, the approach I take comes from just kind of experience working as a musician for hire and a composer. Um, inspiration is a beautiful, beautiful thing if you have time. So, for example... Last night, I was working, um, I was on, st these last couple nights, I have been attending the rehearsals for the play that I'm scoring, uh, virtually. I've been hired, uh, they basically call me on Zoom and I stay with them for six hours. Last night, I had to rearrange four pieces of music. Four pieces that I had written, mastered, mixed, everything. And the director made a few changes and the music needed to reflect those changes. In six hours to essentially reorchestrate multiple pieces of music, I just don't have the time to, or luxury to rely on uh, inspiration. Because if I wait on inspiration and I risk it and I don't get what it done, I lose the next job. I don't get rehired to do it. I get hired to deliver. I think Ryan Leach has an amazing video on this where he talks about the difference between artistry and craftsmanship. As composers, if you're working a job, you have to tackle it as craftsmanship first. Can you deliver what they're asking for? Doesn't matter how artistic it is, how unique it is, in terms of just paying for your food and paying for your bills. When you have the chance 
and you're working with someone who's incredible and artistic and wants to see you do artistic things, then yeah, you can be more artistic. artistic. And once focus on the function first. Does it work? Then after it works, then you can adjust. These strategies I use are typically done just to get a minimal viable project. I need to write a theme that works. I need to write a cue that captures the emotion in the theme and portrays the characters effectively. Once I have something that works well intellectually, then I can spend time adjusting it kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so let's see here. So once again, we have our original idea. A nice little bright valence, simple, cheesy little melody. Bright harmony, bright melody, moderate energy. So this next one, we'll skip this one since we've already covered that one. This next one, we kept the same valence, all right? Same chords, same melody, same brightness. All we've done is change the energy. Now, when you change the energy, notice how different the mood is. Still happy, just a different type. And then we can get even bigger. We can make this even larger by, we manipulated the energy for that one by manipulating the amount of movement. So what happens when we take the whole thing and we start to manipulate the size. So let's take the melody, we'll double it in octaves, and then we'll double the bass line. What happened to this? Where, where are the Bs? Uh, this is an E minor, so it should have, it's an E minor, right? It should have a B, natural. For the one to C major, F major, E minor, then G major, so then higher, we'll highlight these. No idea what happened to those, but yeah, so basically what if we take the bass line now and we double that in octaves? So we've got, uh, in fact, you know what, let's just change it and just do just say goes C, F. So what if we just add an actual bass line? C, no, that was a D. C, uh, G, C. So now we've got an even larger size. kind of just kind of changes and continue adding adding some movement so what if we just add some movement to the bass line and so all I'm doing is I'm adding another quarter note at the end uh, to the fifth you know what let's drop that an octave I'm just taking the last quarter note chop 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 and so like I said the whole thing is when you take an additional mo uh, so to summarize everything Start by describing your motion first to start by describing your character, your world, whatever you're trying to portray and describe that first for emotions in terms of valence and energy. How dark or bright should it be to match your emotion and how much energy do you need to match your emotion? And then after that, you can manipulate the energy and the valence individually or together to change the emotion. And as just kind of a reminder, the surefire way to uh, two overarching strategies from manipulating um, energy is to just uh, change the size and scope or to change the amount of movement. Oops, let's do one of these. We'll change those, and then we'll change the eighth notes. And then once again, I've added more movement. And so we've got even more energy for our theme. And then we'll just add one more C down here because it sounds right. So now let's go through one last time. If anyone has any questions, I think I'm going to be calling it here soon. But let's listen to all three again, shall we? 
Um, let me see here. Diversity M. Uh, welcome, Diversity M. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Andrew, faster rhythm giving me the major Undertale vibes. Uh, yeah, I can kind of see it. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, Andrew, well, I don't know about why, but it reminds me of the hotel theme, if you're familiar with that. I'm not, uh, so, I'm passively familiar with Undertale, because lots of people have sent me their music. In fact, speaking of which, I was thinking of sending music. Uh, next week, I'm playing with the idea of the live stream. What if I just react to your guys' music? I'm going to say, like, the week ahead of time, everybody email me some music you want. I'll listen to it live and provide feedback. I think that could be fun. Uh, anywho, so let's listen to this again. First one, content and happy. This was the vanilla thing we did, right? Just a bright sound and moderate energy, all right? We're not bursting with energy, but we're not comatose either. That's supposed to say comatose. Um, don't know how to spell. Um, it's a positive emotion. Then we manipulate it. Don't do anything to change the energy, but we make the valence a little more confused by using conf uh, extended harmonies. So it creates a kind of nostalgic sound, but it does result in an overall change in the vibe. And in the last one, we kept the original bright valence. Didn't change anything about the harmony or the melody so much, but we did several strategies to just amp up the energy. And so now what was once content and happy now sounds excited. And as this kind of example, you'll see that all it comes down to with portraying emotions in music is being a master at manipulating your valence and your energy. If you can master those two skill sets, there's not an emotion out there that you're not going to be able to portray with music. I mean, I'm probably wrong about that, but I think for the most part it stands. Oops, it was moving. Thanks for stopping by, Andrew. All right, same theme, but we just add some extended harmony. changes. It's a little more wistful now. We used seventh chords and sixth chords in here. But same melody. Didn't do anything different to the melody. Just changed the harmony and it got a different mood. Now same thing. No different harmony. Nothing to the melody other than making it a little shorter. We just added a lot of movement and size. summarize which i already did the summary all right if you can master your ability to describe emotions in terms of energy and valence half the work is done the other half is knowing how to translate those descriptions into music how do you take an emotion with a dark valence and high energy and portray that accurately with your music the more you practice this the more fluent and the more easy it will come to you i mean like what we wrote these three examples in less than 30 minutes um, yeah, it's really fun. I love this kind of stuff. I could talk about it all day, any day, except for the days where I'm sleep deprived, like today. So sorry about that. Um, but yeah, if anyone is interested, I have an entire class dedicated to going in depth on this. Six weeks long, includes live lectures, articles, recordings, and examples. Um, it's lots of fun. There's a group chat, so you can talk with me as well. Uh, description is below, or, in the, or the link is in the description below. Uh, but for now, my friends, thank you for stopping by. All right, I had a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to being a little more uh, awake next week. Um, before we meet next week, I'm going to have a lot of cool stuff coming out. I'm going to be sh sharing the soundtrack from the play. Uh, that should be going up either tonight or tomorrow. And then other than that, um, yeah, look out for the announcement. I think it'll be fun to kind of give feedback on all of your guys' music. Uh, also, follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. I'm going to New York tomorrow morning. I'm flying out there for the premiere of the show, and I'll probably be doing some, like, uh, live answers in the story. All right? So, awesome. Cool. Thank you for stopping by, everybody. Keep studying, keep working hard, and keep writing new music. I almost forgot my old my own tag. Uh, but, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you in the next stream. Bye-bye.